In this presentation, we will set up a new employee within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the Get Great Guitars dashboards. We're going to be looking at the employees in the payroll or in the workers. So on the left side, we've got the workers tab. That's the one we want. We haven't set up any employees. We're in the employees section. Remember that we will not be looking at the paid version of QuickBooks. There's a few of them at this time. We're going to be entering the data kind of as if it was done by an outside third party payroll professional and then entering it into the QuickBooks system. We may look at the paid versions at a later time, concentrating more on just that portion, the paid versions. We will be looking at payroll entry as we go through the data input with a few employees and we'll discuss payroll components in this format. We're going to add the new employee and this would be a similar feature whether no matter which paid version we have or the non-paid version. However, we won't have some of the data input screens related to the processing of the payroll without the paid version, which again we may go back to later and take a look at just focusing in on that payroll section. We want to include payroll in our problem so that we can see it and we can see it as part of the expenses but we will once again do so as if the payroll run from basically a third party and then concentrate on what the payroll journal entry is what it looks like in our data and how we can add that data into the system so we're going to go ahead and add an employee and we're going to say uh, need to pay employees again it's trying to sell us some of the different options within payroll we're going to say no not right now and then we're going to get the employee input field Looks very much like the customer input field, like the vendor input field. We've got the personal kind of information that we're going to enter based on our employees or who our employees are. Remember that most of the information you're going to get for employees is going to come from the W-4. So W-4 form you can take a look at. You can look at the instructions. It's on irs.gov if you type in irs.gov and then look at uh, W-4 form. You can look at the instructions for it and um, look at the actual form itself, which will look something like this. Main information from the form that we need for payroll is obviously the name, first name, last name, social security num number, the address, home address, marital status. And you might be asking, why would I need that? I don't need to know what their marital status. It's kind of nosy, isn't it? Or getting into other people's business kind of thing. But we need that because it's, it's going to be something that um, is going to be part of the calculation for the federal income tax withholding. So we have to have the marital status is going to be some component. And then we also need to know the number of exemptions that we're going to be using for withholdings for federal income tax purposes. So the federal income tax, in other words, is typically the one that's kind of complex, kind of difficult, kind of needs some funny information for it. The other taxes we will be dealing with, Social Security, Medicare, typically FICA taxes, are uh, usually more of a flat rate tax. We don't need a lot of information. We just need to know how much they earned. <laughs> and then we'll multiply that times times the percentage rate, and that'll be basically it. So that's where the information are going to come from. We're just going to add that for a couple employees. We're going to start with uh, Adam. Is going to be our employer. I'm going to tab through this entire field. It's good practice just to use the tab function go through these fields. I'm just going to tab to just take a look at each of the fields and put information where needed. Of course, not all the information is needed on all the fields, which will be typical for most data input screens for things like vendors, customers, employees. So we're going to say Hamilton, which I'm not sure that's the typical way you spell it, but that's what I'm seeing in my data input. And then we're going to print, it says print on checks as use display name so adam hamilton that's how it's going to be done if you don't want it like that and you want something else printed on the checks you can then do so if adam hamilton has some other name that needs to be on there and then we're going to say the address we're going to get is uh, 1423 we're going to say it's second street and we'll say this is in new york i'm not sure why we picked new york not in New York, but in New York. And we'll say the zip code is 10003. Uh, notes, any kind of notes for the employee, we may want to put those in there. It may help us to, you know, uh, to relate to the employer or know some crucial information about them. Email address, probably good, not necessary, not required in order to process the W-2s, the W-3s, the payroll, to write the checks. But if we wanted that added information, 
same as most kind of input fields. It's there, not required. It's good to have if we if we want. Same, the phone number, um, we, we typically would need the phone number. Typically, we want to have the phone number, but it's also good information. We won't be putting it in here, however. And then we're going to say the mobile phone is nice to have, not necessary. And then the billing rate. Note that this isn't the pay rate. This is the billing rate if we were to use this employee and, and bill their time to say an invoice to another customer. So we're not really talking about their hourly rate here. Again, we're not really entering the payroll data for that information. This is more just the informational screen right now. We'll talk more about the, the other data later, but that would be if we're gonna bill someone, uh, billable by default, if, if we're gonna be using again, this time for this individual to bill invoices. So we'll talk more about that when we do the data input. Then we've got the employee ID number, which is a social security number, 565-655-665. We're gonna say that's the social security number. And then we're gonna say the gender is male and the date of hire, hire we're gonna say is 010119. The release date is not there. We're going to assume that uh, Adam is still working with the company. And 0905, we're going to say 1979. So that'll be the information we'll enter for Adam. So now we have our employee list. So in this, in this case, even if we're doing outside payroll from an outside payroll company, we can still have our list of employees, our information within the QuickBooks system even though we're not processing the payroll through the QuickBooks system, it's still, we still have the information there. We still have the contact information and the data related to that employee. We're going to add another one now. So we're going to add a new employee, add an employee, not right now, once again, and we'll go through this data again. So I'm tabbing through. This is going to be Erica as our other employee, Erica, tab, tab, Robertson. Again, I'm not sure. That's exactly how Robertson's totally normally, but that's what we have in the data input. That's what's on the W4. So we're going to say that this is going to be Eric Robertson, uh, Eric Robertson. That's how it's going to be displayed. If we want to change that display, we can uh, check this item and type in some other name. We're going to say that the street, we're going to say it's fourth East second street, and it's going to be in New York once again. And we'll say that this is, uh, New York and the zip code is going to be one zero 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 three and we'll have uh, no notes and the email no email phone number we won't enter the phone number not having a billable and we're going to say that the ID is the social security number which we will input as four five four five four five five four four which is a made-up social security number and then we're going to say the gender will be female and the date higher, we're going to say once again is uh, 010119. So January of the first uh, year that we will be putting this information into the system. And the date of birth, we're going to say is 123179, uh, December 31st, 1979. So that's going to be our second employee that we'll see as we enter the data when we start processing this uh, payroll as we entered data for everything. These will be our two employees that we will take a look at the uh, format of how the paycheck will be and what the withholdings on them, how that would work. Here are our, our two employees, Adam Hamilton and Erica Robinson. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.